Welcome to the Battle of the Books competition for the 2017-2018 school year. My name is Jim Kobe from Spirit Aero Systems, and I'll be your host for this program. Now joining me are student teams from Black, Caldwell, Irving, and Seltzer Elementary Schools. These teams have already competed in preliminary rounds at their schools in order to appear on today's program. We look forward to some exciting games. Now students were given a list of 64 books to read. They need to be familiar with events, characters, and authors of the books in order to answer the questions. They'll also give a book talk about one title from the list. Each team has drawn a book title and was given 15 minutes to prepare a three-minute presentation about the book. These book talks were taped earlier and will be seen a little later here in the program. Now, 12 points are possible for the book talk. The points will be added to the scores in all the rounds. The first two teams to compete are Black and Caldwell Elementary, and we will start over here with Caldwell Elementary. If you would, please introduce yourselves and tell us the title of your fav favorite book. I am Jasmine Castaneda, and my favorite book is Wonder. Okay. I am Dagan Patterson, and my favorite book, book is A Series on Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. My name is Emerson, and my favorite book is Horse Diaries, Bell Star by Allison Hart. Okay. My name is Dylan, and my favorite book is Crenshaw by Kathleen Applegate. Great. Let's give a quick shout out. Who's your librarian? My librarian is Miss Egan. Okay, and I'll bet she helped you guys prepare a lot. Yes. Okay, all right. Let's come over here to the lady and gentleman from Black Elementary. My name is Clara Rusco, and my favorite book is The Penderworks by Jane Birdsall. Okay. My name is Pablo Chu, and my favorite book is Fake Mustache by Tom Engelberger. My name is Brian Wynn, and my favorite book is Book Scavenger by Jennifer Chambliss Burtman. My name is Logan Garcia, and my favorite book is Minecraft the Island by Max Brooks. Okay, and who's your librarian? Ms. Claus. Okay, terrific. Well, my name is Jim. And my favorite book is Encyclopedia Brown, Saves the Day. So, right now we're going to review the rules so that the audience will know how the game's played. Each match consists of 20 questions given to alternating teams. Team members have 30 seconds to answer. They may confer about the answer, but only the person with the book in front of them may say the answer. Five points will be awarded for a correct title with five additional points added if the team can also name the author. If the team cannot answer the question or the answer is incorrect, the other team is allowed five seconds to give an answer. Five points will be awarded then for that correct title. The winning team in the first round will compete against the winning team in the second round for our final match. Right now, let's take a look at the book talks from our first two competing teams. Hello class, today we're going to talk about the book, I Survived the Bombing of Pearl Harbor, 1941. Can anyone tell me who are the main characters? Clara. Danny, Finn, Danny Small, and Aki. Good job. Um, where did it take place? Brian. It took place at Pearl Harbor in 1941. What was the problem in the story? Um, okay. The Japanese bombed the Americans, the Americans because they wouldn't give them enough resources. Okay. What was the resolution, Clara? The resolution was that Danny got out of the bombing range, mostly unharmed. That's good. Ring, ring. That's it, class. Let's go. Hey guys, did you hear there's a tornado coming near us? No. Wait. Okay. Hey guys, did you hear that there's a tornado coming near us? No. No? Well, there is, and <coughs> I hope it doesn't hit the library. Speaking of library, have you guys read this book called Sleeping Ugly? No. What's the author? The author is Jane Yodel. Who's the characters? 
character. The characters are Pr Princess Mozzarella, Plain Jane, Little Old Fairy, and then um, Prince Jojo. What's the problem? The problem is that Mozzarella, the Little Old Fairy, and Plain Jane have fallen asleep and Prince Jojo is trying to wake them up. What's the solution? The solution is that Prince Jojo is trying to find a way to wake them up. What's the setting? The setting is the forest in Plain Jane's house. Oh my god guys, it's Tornado! <laughs> Black Elementary earned 11 points on their book talk, and Caldwell earned 11 points. So they start the round with those scores. Now our team from Black is going to answer the first question as we sound the gong to begin the battle of the books. And our first question goes to Clara from Black Elementary. The opening line of this book is, the house is packed with all the facts about all the blacks all over the world. Name this book. They can confer for up to 30 seconds. Freedom over me? No, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Chance to steal five points, if you can get it. All righty, that buzzer means that your time is up. And so the answer is The Book Itch, Freedom, Truth, and Harlem's Greatest Bookstore by Vanda Michon Nelson. All right, we will stay here with Jasmine from Caldwell Elementary. First question, the Aleuts came to the island to hunt sea otter. In what story does this happen? Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell is correct. Ten points for Caldwell Elementary. And we come over here then to Black Elementary and welcome in Pablo. In what book do future lab employees in what book do future lab employees research trends in the likes and dislikes of children at play? The 14th Goldfish. I'm sorry, that's not correct. Chance to steal. Okay, the correct answer is Lego manufacturers the Christensen Family by Lee Slater. And we will stay over here. And is it uh, Dagan or Emerson with the book now? Okay, Dagan. A girl receives treatment for ringworm by having her scalp washed with green soap and sitting under an ultraviolet light. In what book does this happen? We don't know. Okay, and chance for five points over here. Letters from Rivka by letter by Hess. That's correct. Letters from Rivka by Karen Hess. So Black Elementary gets five points, and we'll stay here and ask the regular question then to Brian. Engraving was a part of this artist's job in what book? Funny, Funny Bones by Donathea. Funny Bones, Posada and His Day of the Dead Calaveras by Duncan Tony, Tonitia? Tonitia, and so that's correct for 10 points. Right, judges? Okay, congratulations. Well done there, Brian. All right, we come back over here to Caldwell. It is Emerson's turn. Emily and her brother used to be interested in the same things, but lately Matthew has become obsessed with the band Flush, who makes an appearance that helps to save Emily and Matthew toward the end of which book? A Handful of Stars by Lord. I'm sorry, that's not correct. Chance for five points. You, know, you guys don't know the band Flush very well, huh? Uh, the, the answer is Book Scavenger by Bertman. Okay, so we stay over here. Logan, mm -hmm. in this book, we read about the friendship of two girls, Lily and Salma. What is the name of the book? A handful of stars. By? Lord. 
That's correct. Yes, A Handful of Stars by Cynthia Lord. Good for 10 points, and you guys will bring the book all the way back up to Clara. And we come back over here to Caldwell Elementary and Dylan. During the Civil War, Ms. Hale told Abraham Lincoln that America needed a national holiday to bring the country together. In 1863, he agreed and made it official. Name the book. Thank you, Sharon. The woman who saved Thanksgiving. Can you repeat that, please? Uh, thank you, Sharon. The woman who saved Thanksgiving. I'm sorry, that's not correct. Chance to steal over here. Thank you, Sarah. The woman who saved Thanksgiving by Hale. There you go. Thank you, Sarah. Sorry. Uh, the Woman Who Saved Thanksgiving by Lori Hulls Anderson. Okay, so five points, and we begin with the top of the order over here, Clara. As he is dying, Captain Skurlock tells the story of how Uncle Twice was framed for murder. Skurlock, Meachings, and Plumley are the guilty parties, so Uncle Twice has his name cleared, allowing him to return to his family. Name this book. Peppermint in the Parlor by Barbara Brooks Wallace. Perfect. All right, 10 points there for the pandas from Black Elementary. We come over here to the Bulldogs, top of the order with Jasmine. A boy breaks the window in a neighbor's car and not only replaces the window, but polishes the car in which book? Crossover. I'm sorry, that's not correct. Chance over here. Um, Centerfield, Centerfield Ball Hawk by Christopher. That's right, Centerfield Ball Hawk by Matt Christopher. Good for five points, and we will stay here with Pablo. In this biography, the main character sold a chicken for a dime in order to buy a boat ticket to Natchez, Mississippi. What is the title of the book? Went to Natchez, Mississippi. The Amazing Age of John Roy Lynch. Do you know the author? Barton. That's correct. Good teamwork there. The Amazing Age of John Roy Lynch by Chris Barton. That's good for 10 points. Okay, we got a close game going on here. So we come over here to Caldwell and Dagan. 11 year old Lonnie experiments with form, including sonnets, haiku, and epistle poems. But his poems are mostly free verse. Name the book. Poet by Tate. Sorry, that's not correct. Chance for five points. Okay, the answer is Locomotion by Jacqueline Woodson. And actually, you want to keep the book there, Brian. So it was one of those famous hundred year naps that need a prince and a kiss to end them. Is a line from what book? Sleeping Ugly by Yolen. Sleeping Ugly by Jane Yolen. I believe that was a favorite over here of somebody, right? Okay. A favorite of yours, Emerson, and you have the book. I read it. You read it? Okay, good. In this book, people construct rafts of stale bread glued together with peanut butter to escape the crazy weather in their town. Name this book. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Bye. We don't know. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs by Judy Barrett. So good for five points. Okay, and we're over here to Logan. Danny brought Aki a present when he returned home. In what book did this happen? I survived the bombing of Pearl Harbor in 1941. By? Tarshish. You guys better get that. That was your book talk, right? Okay. Well done, 10 points for, uh, for Black Elementary. We come over here to Caldwell Elementary and it is Dylan. In which book do you read about what happens to the brothers who don't ever finish anything or read directions? Brothers don't ever finish anything or read directions. Just 
Okay, chance for five. No. Boy, this one stumped everyone. The answer is Jumanji by Chris Van Alsberg. 16 questions down, four to go. We start back here with the top of the order for Black and Clara. Haas family is sponsored by a cowboy in Alabama who has never ridden a horse. Name this book. Inside Out and Back Again by Lay. Inside Out and Back Again by Tanha Lay. Okay, good for 10 points. And top of the order for Caldwell. In which book does a boy take advantage of his new stardom of being a football owner in order to become popular with his classmates? Kid Owner. Bye. We do not know. Okay, Kid Owner is correct for five points. The author is Tim Green. And it is the last question for Black Elementary, and it goes to Pablo. This baby is going straight to the moon, were Gibby's words as his class watched their red plane fly through the clouds on Science Fair Day. Name the book. Junkyard Wonders by Blocko. Polacco. <laughs> well done. Good teamwork there. Uh, Patricia Polacco's Junkyard Wonders. So 10 points for Black on their final question. And now Caldwell, your final question, Dagan. In which book does a house walk on legs to the city of Canales to find a cure for the main character's mother? The Stonekeeper by Kabushi. The Stonekeeper Amulet Series Volume 1 by Kazu Kibushi. Wow, well done. Great game, everyone. So at the beginning of the round, you mentioned your librarian. So uh, I'm curious, Caldwell, what was your strategy to read 64 books? Did cards. you divide them up? We, we, we made flashcards. We, we made lists. And we got to go on a website to practice our pronunciations. Really? And we also started with the short books, and then we got the chapter books out of the way. Okay, okay, so you started with the smaller books, then you got, worked your way up to the chapter books, mm -hmm. and then did you have specific times of the day or, or of the week? We got yes. involved every few days. Yeah, yeah. we watched we, that, some Battle of the Books competitions. Watched the Battle of the books. You watched some old Battle of the Books competitions. Did, did you see me hosting any of those? No. no. Okay, because those are only on at like 2 a.m. Uh, in the summer. Okay, well, we good. Watched that Good. Were very long ago. Yeah. <laughs> what about you guys? What what did you uh, what did you guys do at Black Elementary? We well, each had sixteen books to read. Each had sixteen, yeah. so you just divided them up evenly. Yeah. We, and we also just tried yeah. our best. And you tried your best. That's yeah. a great strategy right there. So when you did you guys meet regularly though? Yeah, yeah. Every, every, Friday. Friday. every Friday. Sometimes Tuesdays and at sometimes the end. Sometimes Tuesdays. Okay. Good. And so you discussed the books with each other? Yes. yes. Okay. Good, good. So what kind of books do you guys like to read normally? Long chapter books. Long chapter yeah. books, yeah. What about you guys? What kind of books do you like to read? Long chapter books. books. A lot of horse books. Okay. Anything that has horses. Uh, horses, okay. Uh, I am working my way up to chapter books. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get there someday. Now the final score in this game was 106 for black, 41 for Caldwell Elementary. So our congratulations to both teams, but Black will move on and they will meet the winner of our next match in the final round of Battle of the Books today. Right now, let's take a look at the book talks from the teams coming up in round two. Code Blue, Code Blue. This is Dr. Resolution requesting that all, all literary surgeons must report to the operating room. Repeat, all literary surgeons must report to the operating room. Dr. Superb setting reporting. Dr. Equality characters reporting. Dr. Perfect Power reporting. Dr. Resolution, we are all here. What is your emergency? This book review of the title Island of the Blue Dolphins is on needs help. It lacks the necessity, necessary details to keep it breathing. We have to fix it before the author 
Scott O'Dell finds out. The characters are the characters are weak. The setting is gasping for air. The problem is on life support and the resolution is not responding at all. For my part, we could change s some island to the island off the coast of California. Instead of Karina, Chief, Orloff, and her brother, and her and dad, we can change it to just only Karina because she got left on the island by herself. <clears throat> I say we should change the problem from Karina being on the island, on a random island with her mom, um, with her dad and her brother, to Karina being <clears throat> on a random island off the coast of California with her little brother. I think we got this. When Scott O'Dell sees this book review, he will know that Island of the Blue Dolphins is to be enjoyed by many readers. Welcome to Talk About That Book. I'm your host, Anne, and our contestants today are... Jimmy, Linda, and Sai. Here are the rules. You must have the characters and settings of the book. You must also have important details about the characters and the book events. You must have the problem and resolution, and you have to have the book events in order with details. Junie, choose a book, please. I'll choose Lucky Strike. Great choice. Lucky Strike by Bobby Pyron. Um, Junie, what is the characters and the settings in the book? The characters are Nathan Hollow, uh, an old friend that lives with his grandpa, and his grandpa, and Genesis Beam. The settings are a, his house, a golf course, and the beach. All right. Silas, what is the problem and resolution of the book? The problem of the book is Nate is really unlucky. The resolution is he gets struck by lightning, so after he gets struck by lightning, he just he's really lucky now. All right. Linda, what are the book events in order? First, Nate got struck by lightning. He became super popular and became super lucky. Um, he stopped hanging out with his best friend Genesis Beam, which was worried about the turtles, about them not laying their eggs. And then at the end, they there was a hurricane, and Nate and Genesis went out through the hurricane to save them, and they both got struck by lightning. Thanks for watching Talk About That Book, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye. The competitors in our next round are from Irving Elementary and Seltzer Elementary, and right now we will have them tell us their names and the title of your favorite book, Seltzer Elementary. My name is Anne, and my favorite book is Letters from Rivka by Hess. Okay, good. My name is Linda, and my favorite book is The Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. Mm -hmm. My name is Jeannie, and my favorite book is Circus Mirandas by Beasley. My name is Silas, and my favorite book is Mayday by Karen Harrington. Okay, and you are the Spartans, and your librarian is? Mrs. Morowski. Mrs. Morowski. Okay, we come over here to the All-Stars from Irving Elementary. Go ahead and introduce yourselves and the title of your favorite book. My name is Liliana, and my favorite book is Fish in a Tree by Hunt. My name is Victoria, and my favorite book is ha A Handful of Stars by Cynthia Lord. My name is Wendy, and my favorite book is Wonder by Palacio. Mm -hmm. My name's Vanessa, and my favorite book is Dogman. Okay. Very well. Well, again, my name is Jim. My favorite book is Encyclopedia Brown, Saves the Day, but you already knew that, right? <coughs> okay, well, so Irving Elementary begins the round with 12 points, and Seltzer Elementary starts the round with 11 points from their book talks. Now, the Irving team is going to answer the first question, so it is Away We Go with Liliana. In which book does a grandfather and granddaughter attend middle school together? The 14th Goldfish by Holm. The 14th Goldfish by Jennifer Holm is good for 10 points and a good start for Irving Elementary. We come over here to Anne. This book tells about a famous illustrator who was a soldier in the German army during World War I and was always curious about the world. Name the book. The 
The Journey That Saved Curious George by Borden. Yes, Journey That Saved Curious George by Louise Borden. Good for 10 points, so both teams off to a great start. So back here to Irving Elementary, it's Victoria's turn. A mother bird leaves her nest for 51 weeks and expects another animal to take her place in which book? Horton Hatches the Egg by Dr. Seuss. Yeah, okay, that you nailed that one. In Selter, Linda, everyone is going somewhere except Dad and me is a quote from what book? Everyone is going somewhere except oh. Dad and me. Fly Away Home by Bunting. Fly Away Home by Eve Bunting is good. Boy, we got a couple good teams here. Irving and Wendy. In this book, Flesh Lump Eater has nightmares about Jack the Giant Killer. Name the book. Okay, they will pass. Chance for five points. The BFG by Roald Dahl. So we will stay over here then with Seltzer. It is Junie's turn. In this book, you will learn of new discoveries about the universe made possible by the Hubble Space Telescope. Name this book. Destination Space by Simon. Yes, Destination Space by Seymour Simon. Good for ten points. All right. And back over here to Irving and Anessa. In this chapter book biography, a girl endures hardships such as heavy rain, snow, gale winds, and hunger while traveling through the northwestern part of the United States. Name the book. On the same day in March. Sorry, that's not correct. Chance for five points over here. No. Okay, Who Was Sacagawea by Dennis B. Fraden and Judy Bloom. Okay, and we'll stick over here with Silas in this book. A smartometer determined that one of the main characters got smarter by reading. Which book was this? A smartometer. Fish in a Tree by Hunt. Nope, I'm sorry, that's correct. Chance for some points. Dogman? Dogman is correct for five points, and it's by Dav Pilkey. Boy, it says that one of the main characters got smarter by reading. Can you believe that? Smarter by reading. Okay, Liliana. At the end of the school year, Augie wins the Henry Ward Beecher Medal for being the student whose quiet strength has carried up the most hearts. In which book? Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Was that somebody's favorite book over here? Seems, yeah, all right. Okay, back over here, top of the order, Anne. In what book does Micah Tuttle set out to find a mysterious traveling show? Circus Mirandas by Beasley. Circus Mirandas by Cassie Beasley. Good for 10 points, well done. All right, back over here to the Irving All-Stars, and it is Victoria's turn in this story. Michael tells about his discovery of a mysterious stranger living in an old shed on the rundown property the boy's family has just purchased. Name the book. Peppermint's in the parlor? No, I'm sorry. Come over here. Skellig. Skellig is correct. Good for five points by David Almond. And we'll just stay right here then and give the question to Linda. In which book does the main character say, I want everyone to be able to use my word book, not just doctors, politicians, and lawyers, but cobblers, fishmongers, and factory workers? The Right Word by Bryant. The Right Word, Roger and his thesaurus by Jen Bryant. That's good for 10 points, congratulations. Good match going on here. Wendy, in this book, a cowgirl helps Lenny solve the Heidelberg handlebar problem. Name the title. The Fake Mustache. By? Engelberger. Yes. And by the way, I think you should get bonus points if you could name the whole title. <laughs> fake Mustache, or how Jody O'Rodeo and her wonder horse and some nerdy kid saved the U.S. presidential election from a mad genius criminal. 
by Tom Engelberger. Ten points over here for Irving Elementary. Back over here to Seltzer, Juni, a book about these animals lists the largest one as the Komodo dragon and the smallest as the dwarf gecko. Name this book. Nick Bishop Lizards by Nick Bishop. Yes, Nick Bishop Lizards. Okay, back over here, another 10 points for Seltzer, Irving, and Anessa. After taking the northern ship named the Merrimack and reinforcing it with iron, the south renamed the ship Virginia. Name the book. Pass. They will pass. Chance for five points. Big Bad Ironclad by Hales. Big Bad Ironclad by Nathan Hale is correct. Good for five points. All right, we'll stick here with Silas. During a lock-in, the characters in this book have to solve a rebus in order to win the grand prize. In which book would you read about this? Solve a rebus. Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Gravenstein. Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library by Chris Grabenstein is good. All right, well done. 16 questions down, four to go. And we begin over here at the top of the order, Liliana. An artist padded this main character's mouth with cotton balls so his cheeks didn't sink in. What is the title? Can you repeat the question? Sure. An artist padded this main character's mouth with cotton balls so his cheeks didn't sink in. <laughs> Chance for five. George Washington's Teeth. That's right. George Washington's Teeth by Deborah Chandra and Madeline Kamora. All right. We will stay over here then. And Anne. In his mom's view, the main character is the messiest boy in the world. Possibly true from pictures. What is this book? Who is Melvin Bubble by Nick Brule? Who is Melvin Bubble by Nick Brule? Okay, well done. Ten points. And it is time for the final question of the round for Irving. And Victoria, if you charge neighborhood children 25 cents to build sleds, what book would you be reading? Marvelous Maddie. By? By Macaulay. Marvelous Maddie by Emily Arnold Macaulay. Good for 10 points. Good round. And Seltzer, your final question here for Linda. A boy keeps a journal of his wilderness adventure in which book? My Side of the Mountain by George. My Side of the Mountain by Jean Craighead George. Wow. Great, great battle there. So. Tell me a little bit about how you guys went about this, Seltzer. How, how did you divide up the 64 list? We just split into two teams. It was me and Junie and Linda and Silas, and then whoever wanted to cover the 32 books, whichever book, book they wanted to read, they could read. Okay, so that's interesting. You actually split into two teams. Then did the two teams meet regularly? Yeah. Okay, good, good. Well, seems to have worked pretty well for you. How about, uh, how about over here, Irving? How did you guys uh, divide up the books? What was your strategy? We split it a 16. Okay, 16 apiece? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And did you all meet and discuss the books? Mm -hmm. Okay. And did 64 seem like a lot of books or not, not really after you got into it? Not too bad? Okay. So we should maybe double the amount of books for next year? Okay. All right. Well, I guess we won't then. Okay. All right. Well, good. And uh, what type of books? Do you guys like to read normally? Chapter books. Chapter books? Okay. How about you guys? Chapter, chapter books. books. Chapter books, yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, good then. And the score in this round was 67 for Irving, 116 for Seltzer Elementary. So congratulations to Seltzer Elementary. You will meet the winner of the first round for the championship match. And while we change teams for our final round, let's see if you can answer some questions about last year's books.
All right, we are ready to start our final battle. The winner of this round will be one of our champions for the 2017-18 school year. And our teams are from Black and Seltzer Elementaries. Good luck to both teams as we will ask you 20 questions in this round. And we begin over here. Welcome back to the pandas from Black Elementary and Clara. For the main character in this book, the best cure for a horrible day is her dog, Lucas. Name the book. Jonah and Lucas by Medina. Okay, Jonah and Lucas by Juana Medina. And we come over here to Anne from the Seltzer Elementary Spartans. This book mentions paintbrushes made from human hair. Name the book. The Pot That One Built by Andrews Cobell. Yes, The Pot That One Built by Nancy Andrews Goble. All right, over here to Pablo. I would rather wait a year than publish a bad children's book, as I have too much respect for children. In which book do you read this quote? Book Scavenger by Barrett. I'm sorry, that's not correct. Chance for five points. Journey That Saves Curious George. No, it is Some Writer, the story of E.B. White by Melissa Sweet. All right, we will stay right here, though, with Linda. In which book would you learn that there are places where the weather doesn't change much throughout the year? On the Same Day in March by Singer. On the Same Day in March, A Tour of the World's Weather by Marilyn Singer. Weather doesn't change much here in Kansas, does it? All right, over here to Black Elementary and Brian. Each night, Josh and JB have to make 10 free throws in a row before they can go to bed. One night, Josh had to make 15. Name the book in which this happens. Crossover by Alexander. Crossover by Kwame Alexander is correct for 10 points. It is Seltzer, it is Junie. In this book, a second grade class gets stuck on an island after a footbridge collapses. What is the title of this book? Iggy Peck, Architect by Beatty. Iggy Peck, Architect by Andrea Beatty is correct. Boy, we got a good round going here. Over here to Black and way down there is Logan. Children, neighbors, the police, and all the dogs in Oatsdale searched and searched over and over. But even after a month, Mr. and Mrs. Duncan's son was still missing. Name the book. Sylvester and the Magic Pebble? That is correct. Do you know the author? Steen? Yes, Sylvester and the Magic Pebble by William Steeg is correct for 10 points. Okay, and down here it is Silas. After Nate had found his new good luck and his new friends, some of his old friends felt left out of his new life. Name that book. Lucky Strike by Bobby Pyron. Lucky Strike by Bobby Pyron. You nailed it. All right, it is top of the order time, and that means Clara over here. In this book, Allie's grandpa shared the story Alice in Wonderland with her and her mother. Name the book. Fish in a Tree by Hunt. Fish in a Tree by Linda Mullally Hunt is correct. Good teamwork over here by Black Elementary. Okay, Seltzer, and it is top of the order, Anne. In what book does Mr. Yap accuse Omri of stealing toys? The Indian in the Cupboard by Banks. Yes, Indian in the Cupboard by Lynn Reed Banks. Okay, Black Elementary, Pablo. Although his master never let him purchase his freedom, the main character in this book felt that words loosened the chains of bondage long before his last day as a slave. Name this book. Poet by Don Tate. Yes, Poet, the remarkable story of George Moses Horton by Don Tate. Well played. Question number 13 in the round, and it goes to Linda. Excuse us. Do I have a question 11? Question 11 of the round. A boy finds homes and acceptance with the African-American kids from the East End and the Caucasian kids from the West End in which book? Maniac McGee by Spinelli. 
Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli is correct. And now somehow mathematically we'll jump from question 11 to 13. Brian, if Peter stayed off of the highway, he thought he could make the trip back to his fox in a week or less. Name the book. Pax by Benny Packer. Again, great teamwork over here. Yeah, this is Pax by Sarah Penny Packer. All right, we come over here to the Spartans from Seltzer. It is Junie's turn. After receiving a letter from their German friends, the Kramers, Mama filled a box with wool socks, sweaters, and her own winter coat to help their friends survive after World War II. What book is this? Judge. One Thousand Tracings by Judge. One Thousand Tracings by Judge? Mm, yes, that is correct. One Thousand Tracings, Healing the Wounds of World War II by Lita Judge. All right, and we come to black. Way down there is Logan. Bacchus is a blacksmith. He works with metals and makes fences on the Fairchild's estate. Name the title of the book in which we read about Bacchus. Could be also pronounced Bacchus. Dega Gas. Sorry. Come over here, five points. Freedom Over Me. Freedom Over Me is correct. Eleven states, their lives and dreams brought to life by Ashley Bryan. So five points, and then we will stay right here with Silas. In what book do four motherless sisters meet a fatherless boy and become best of friends during a three-week summer vacation? The Penderwicks by Bridsall. Penderwicks, a summer tale of four sisters, two rabbits, and a very interesting boy by Jeanne Birdsall. Okay, good for 10 points. And we have four questions remaining in the round. That means top of the order. And for Black Elementary, that means Clara. Hold the ball with the hands. Game time is two 15-minute halves. And a goal is made when the ball goes into the basket. Are rules you learn in which book? I know. The Man Who Invented Basketball by Wyckoff. The man who invented basketball, James Naismith, in his amazing game by Edwin Britt Wyckoff. Where did Naismith go on to coach? Do you remember? He, where did he coach? KU. KU, that's right. All right. All right bonus points over here for Seltzer. Not really. Okay, top of the order here. And uh, Anne, in one of his schemes, Count Lustig conned people out of their money by promising them the rights to buy the Eiffel Tower. Name this book. Tricky Vic by Pizzoli. Tricky Vic, the impossibly true story of the man who sold the Eiffel Tower by Greg Pizzoli. And it is last question time of the round for Black Elementary. Pablo gets it. An African-American boy talks about his friend who is a man his mother grew up with. This man has decided to take the young fatherless Damon under his wing. Name the book. My Man Blue by Grimes. 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 My Man Blue by Nikki Grimes is correct. All right. And final question of the round all together. It goes to Linda from Seltzer in this book. Jackson's father was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or MS. He lost his job building houses and then his mother lost her job as a music teacher. What's the title of this book? Jackson's father diagnosed with MS. Father and mother both, both lost their jobs. We can try though. We don't know. No, I'm sorry, that's not correct. Chance for five points. Kid owner? Nope. The answer is Crenshaw by Catherine Applegate. Wow. What a great round. You're two very, very good teams. We talked a little bit earlier about, uh, you know, how you arrived at a strategy to read the books. I I'm curious, in these days, you don't go to a library and check out 64 books. Do you read them on devices, like something like this or anything? No? some of my books on you, you did read some of your books on a tablet or on yeah, a phone? A mm -hmm. yeah. No? You guys just read books? Yeah. Yep. Okay. How about y'all? Did you read uh, on any books on your devices? No? I listened to an audio book because we didn't have it in our library. Oh, really? You listened to an audio book? Okay. 
Oh, those are great for trips. Eight hours. Mm -hmm. Eight hours of audio? Oh my. Well, I hope that was an interesting book. Actually, audio books are really cool. They, you really get into them, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Well, good. So, what advice would you guys have for uh, you know next year's Battle of the Books participants? Teamwork. Teamwork. Okay. How about you guys? What what yeah. advice would you have for next year's Battle of the Books participants? Always Just think you do can your do best. it. Okay. Good positive attitude. Always think you can do it. What would you say down here? Just do your best. Just do your best. That's pretty good advice. Yeah, pretty good advice. Okay, well, we're going to have to take a look at the scores here. Everybody, the score in our tournament today, the finale. Oh, it was a close one. Black Elementary, 91 points. Congratulations. Seltzer Elementary, 106 points. Congratulations. And you are our winner today. So, we have some fabulous prizes for you. I'm just going to let you pass the bucket. There is a gift bag, and then down at the bottom of the bucket, you'll find something else. All right, so certainly the dedication and teamwork of Seltzer, and they said teamwork is their advice, throughout the year was a great accomplishment, and certainly we are proud of all the teams. We are proud of all the students who participated on our teams in our schools, and thanks for your efforts. Thank you also to the library and the classroom teachers and parents for all they contribute. We urge you to join us this afternoon at 2 o'clock. The master of Battle of the Books, Ted Woodward, will be on hand right here, WPS-TV, Cox Cable Channel 20, AT&T UVerse Channel 99, and you can see another exciting Battle of the Books competition. In the meantime, we encourage you to keep reading.